Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to pop off test. I'm gonna just do the mag carb and with a fuel pump. It's got three ports, the pulse line, the return line, and the fuel inlet. The fuel inlet is what you wanna hook to your pop off tester. I made this one, all the stuff came from Lowe's. It's like quick connects, quarter inch barb, air regulator, stuff like that. I think I paid like 30 bucks for the stuff maybe. You need to have this stuff. I haven't needed it usually, but I decided I better get it now. Probably gotten lucky. But just sealed everything up with thread seal tape. It's got this gauge on it here. It's kind of hard to get all this in the shot, but you hook this to the fuel inlet and you hook a piece of fuel line to from the pulse to the fuel return just to block the stuff, just to keep the air inside. So you need some kind of liquid like WD-40. We're gonna push down on our needle valve to where it lifts the needle up. We're gonna take it and we're gonna spray some WD-40 down in that needle valve. Not really anything coming out of my WD-40 hand. There we go. And we're gonna let it down. So, set up there. I don't know if I can get the gauge in the picture as well, but we're just going to slowly let some in it until it pops. Let's see if I can do it slowly. Okay, 10, 15, 20, 25. Should be getting close. 30, 35, we popped at 35, okay? Our other carb popped at 32, so that was pretty close. We're gonna try this again just to verify. Spray some more down in there. Now, here we go again. Two. Okay, there we go. So the carbs are even on the pop off, which is good, and they're within spec. I think the spec is like 23 to 42 or something like that. It's a pretty large range, but they're all good in that department because they're even. You want the pop off to be as close as possible, like within, I'd say within three or four. But these are basically spot on. I don't know what happened that first time. We can try it again. That's my aerial. Okay, try it again. You don't want none of this. You kind of want to point it away from you. That way it doesn't pop back in your face. Twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-two. We've got a leak somewhere. I don't think we put enough in there. So we're going to try that again. Close that back up. I'm gonna put the valve. I'm gonna put the gauge off camera that way I can just have it sitting straight up this time. 20, 25, 30. It popped at 30. So we're right in the range. And they're even. Maybe one PSI off or something like that. But you get the idea. So that's how you clean, rebuild, disassemble, and put back together your carbs. I'm gonna make a video in a second of me putting them back on the manifold. But you already know how to do that. So I'm also gonna be putting the oil injection lines that I ordered onto the manifold in that video. It'll be the next clip in this one. Okay, so I went ahead and put the carbs back on the rotary valve cover, intake manifold, whatever you wanna call it. Make sure before you put it on there, you go ahead and Wow, that's not in the shot. There we go. You go ahead and put the fuel line on the back too. For these particular carbs, it runs from here to here. This is your input 
fuel, this is your return fuel, this is your pulse line, so you won't hook any of these up yet. You won't put those on them when you get it in the ski. You gotta hook the throttle cable back up, throttle connect, get on the back of it. Okay, so I went ahead and tested out putting these oil injection lines on that I bought from OSD Parts. It came with these little clamps, like the OEM ones, and I was kind of baffled at how to put them on. These are some of the tightest hoses ever, but you just gotta kind of wiggle them on there, use a rag or something. But to put these clamps on, you gotta have some wire crimpers right here, and they're gonna go in this little spot right above my finger. You gotta put them on, put them in there like this, and then you just crimp them down. You don't wanna twist, you just wanna push down, and you don't wanna crimp too hard or you'll end up breaking a little nipple, especially on these since they're smaller. These are kinda hard to get to. So, that's not even in the shot, so let's see how I'm getting the shot. You still can't see it that well. Yeah, you just gotta have a pair of these cutters. That's close as it's gonna get. But these are a little hard to get to. They're not really in a good spot. You gotta have them turned a certain way. I'm sure there's a better tool, but this is what I've got. So keep spinning. Okay, I got it now. These you especially don't want to twist and you don't want to, you just want to snug it down. You don't want to torque anything down really because you can snap these off super easy. They're not made very well. But yeah, there we go. That's how you put back together your Sea-Doo carbs and you replace the oil injection lines. If y'all like this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you got any difficulties or questions or anything like that. And subscribe for more Jet Ski Rehab.